Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Suzanne Rauscher. I am class of 1993. Yikes. Um, <laughs> I am currently a senior vice president of current production at a production company called Bright Spot Content. We produce unscripted television, which is a reality competition um, docu shows for lots of different networks from Discovery, TLC, Animal Planet to Hulu. Um, we have some projects in the works with Amazon. So um, a lot of great variety. Um, I got in the business uh, after a while, after I graduated, um, I moved to Phoenix and then to Los Angeles because I wanted to be a TV producer. And I started as a production assistant, which um, basically is bottom of the barrel, running errands, copying scripts, running memos around because we didn't even have email back then. Um, and uh, going to the grocery store for celebrities and buying them the exact correct product or else you got in big trouble. Um, and it was a lot of hours and really hard, but fun. And I worked my way up. I um, started in field producing, which is going out and um, shooting uh, with a camera crew, uh, docu content. And that was when reality TV was booming. And I got really lucky and I moved my way up to supervising producer, executive producer, which is a showrunner where you're given your own show to run. Um, I did that for about 10 years um, before I ended up at the network side. I worked at TLC for um, a few years, and um, then I went back to production and became an executive on the production side. So that's kind of my career path. Um, nice to join you all today. My name is Matt Mullen. Um, I'm currently a director of product for um, NCAA Digital here at Warner Media. I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia, where um, kind of one one of the Warner Media um, hubs um, out there. And I currently oversee the product de development of the March Madness Live application. So I don't know how many of you guys are sports fans out there, but um, we create an app specifically for fans who want to tune in and watch all the March Madness games and fill out your brackets and, and bring all that magic together all, all in one space. Um, I graduated uh, University of Arizona in 2008 with a degree in media arts. Um, and I thought I want, when I was growing up, I thought I wanted to be Suzanne, um, actually. I was going to be <laughs> a TV producer, hopefully like unscripted, just like she said. Um, but when I graduated, um, I was lucky enough to get internship at PBS and specifically at PBS Kids, Public Broadcasting Service. Um, and it was in the digital space. This was back in 2008. When and that was before iPads and smartphones existed, we just had a website, but we were starting to gear up um, online streaming for uh, kids' content um, there. And so I was lucky enough to get involved with that. As you can see, the world has obviously taken to that and obviously taken over how how we consume media these days. Um, and so I was along for the roller coaster as we were as all those big products were launched. Right, um, we created a, a, the first video streaming app for kids um, on iPad. Then when smartphones launched, we were doing the same thing there. Um, and, and this role called product management started to develop as, a, as I was in this field naturally. Um, and so what a product manager is, is, it feels kind of like a film producer, but what you're doing is developing applications. Um, and so you're thinking about your user, you're, um, you're trying to gear towards what their needs are and, and launching and wrangling a big circus of people to get, um, to get that experience out there. So all these skills and stuff that I, I learned at the University of Arizona, I'm applying, but just in a slightly different way in, in the digital space. Um, I grew up a lifelong sports fan. Um, and so I knew I always wanted to kind of try to find a, a career in sports. Um, and so I was lucky enough to find a product management job um, at Warner Media. Um, and that's where I've been for the last three years, um, helping develop, like I said, this March Madness Live app alongside the March Madness tournament um, year after year. So that's a little bit about me. I'm Quinn Corrigan. Um, I have not been in my industry for a super long time, but I uh, graduated in 2019 with a BFA in Useful Theater. Um, I am from Tucson, Arizona, and I moved out to Chicago about two years ago, so right after I graduated. Um, I have been just kind of auditioning, and I'm going the acting route. So I do musical theater. Um, I also do um, more like stage acting, film acting, commercial acting, that kind of stuff. Um, thing in the past two years, things have been 
a little rocky just because of the pandemic and everything, which which you all know about. Um, so I was in a shell when I first moved out here at a small theater and then uh, literally closed that in March of 2020 and then didn't really do any theater or anything until uh, the past month or two ago when I started uh, started working on a show that I'm currently in now at a uh, bigger community theater, a little bit outside of Chicago. Um, other than doing like theater stuff, my other business or how I kind of get myself through is I'm a um, restaurant server at a uh, very popular uh, company, Let Us Entertain You in um, Chicago. So I work at a restaurant right downtown. So I kind of do the restaurant job as well as doing theater stuff. My name is Calder Hines. I graduated from the U of A in 2008 with a BA in art history. Uh, and then I went on to get my master's degree in sport administration. And um, currently what I do now, I work in the sports and entertainment industry where I'm the VP of PR and communications for Wasserman, which is one of the biggest sports music talent agencies in the world. Um, a lot of people know us by who we represent, our big name clients. So we do athletes, we do musicians, and we also represent brands uh, with over 30 offices all over the world. Uh, some of the folks we represent uh, for the U of A connection, Luke Walton, who's now head coach of the Kings, is a client. Uh, in women's soccer, we have Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, baseball, we have Giancarlo Stanton, Olympic space, Katie Ledecky, great swimmer who had an awesome Olympics, um, Clay Thompson and Russell Westbrook in the NBA, uh, WNBA, Diana Taurasi, Sue Bird. Uh, we also work in the uh, NFL, Marshawn Lynch, NHL, Connor McDavid, uh, global football, Virgil van Dyke, Jamie Vardy, and on and on and on, uh, athlete wise. And then musicians, um, which is a new part of our business was added earlier this year. We represent Billie Eilish, Ed Sheeran, Drake, Casey Musgraves, Coldplay, a whole bunch of others, probably 2000 artists in total and 3000 athletes. So we're all over the board. Um, what exactly PR and communications of Wasserman means is that I handle the internal and also external communications for the company, our executives and our clients. And then I also handle the social media for our company and the different sports divisions that have their own channels. Um, you know, basically day to day, that means my job is promoting the company, pitching stories, writing statements, press releases, uh, facilitating media requests. If we have someone from Wall Street Journal or from ESPN who wants a client or who needs a statement on something, uh, usually, hopefully it's the good stuff. Sometimes it's crisis PR. Um, and just handling anything that involves uh, interacting with the media for our, our clients and executives. Uh, before Wasserman, I've been here almost five years now. I was doing PR, but on the team side uh, for the in, mainly in the NBA with the Los Angeles Lakers, Brooklyn Nets, New Orleans Hornets. And then I also worked for uh, the Miami Dolphins before that. And I actually just relocated back to Tucson, where I was born and grew up with uh, my wife, Lisa, who was kind enough to join here. Um, and then also our two kiddos. So we just moved back in February. So uh, it's great to be back in Tucson. Hello, everyone. My name is Lacey John, and I am the Director of Alumni Career and Professional Development. And I am fortunate enough to work with Justin on this project. And it has just been a pleasure to put these events on because of the valuable content that is shared for not only students, but also alumni in navigating and managing our career decisions. Before we jump into the discussion, I think we have a small enough group where we could do quick introductions with people who are participating. And maybe you could introduce yourself and you know, tell about kind of why you wanted to, to join the call today and what you're looking to get out of it. Hi, I'm Olivia Rispoli. Um, I'm currently, well, I'm a fifth year, but I'm currently a senior at the University of Arizona. Um, I'm a communication major and PR minor. Um, I think I'm just kind of, this is my first like panel ever. So I'm just really excited to like hear how people kind of got started. Um, I think I'm more interested in like PR crisis. So I think PR and like also like directing would be fun just to kind of hear your guys' point of view. Also, you said like you started somewhere and then you moved somewhere else. So I kind of just want to hear about that and kind of just where to start almost and kind of like where to go from there. Perfect. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I think we have that our panel could probably go forever on on the journey, right? Um, all right, perfect. Andrew, why don't you go next? 
Hey, Andrew Moore, uh, I'm actually a director at a venture fund here in town investing in healthcare startups. Uh, I actually joined today, just really like learning and hearing about interesting career paths and different different careers that are out there for, for people and how they got to where they are. So really just here to, to learn and see what other people are doing out there. Okay, thank you. And Maggie? Hi everyone, I'm Maggie. Um, I am from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but uh, I'm in Tucson and I am a senior. Um, I am a music BA integrative studies major and a arts administration minor. I really focus on the uh, behind the scenes, the business and production side of the music industry, but I also really like just fine arts in general. Uh, I work with a nonprofit um, here in Tucson called Groundworks, and I really like uh, event management and event producing. So uh, I joined the call and the meeting just to like kind of know what's out there for uh, event management and just like a little background about the industry. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. No, that's great, Mikey. And is it Marmda? Mar yes, yes, you got it. Perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, I appreciate you saying it correctly. Uh, so my name is uh, Marmda Sun, and I'm a third year studying uh, studio art and as well as uh, uh, I'm looking into doing marketing uh, potentially in the future. And I, the reason for the, uh, for joining the call was, uh, that, um, I actually stalked everybody's LinkedIn page and, uh, just to see, uh, you know, their, everybody's career paths. And I was like, oh, um, Mr. Matt Mullen here, um, you know, is doing something that has to do with the products and product management and something that's close to that. So I wanted to hear, um, uh, you know, something that I personally would like to be participating in, in as my career. Hi, I'm Brenda. I'm graduating this December early. Um, I'm an entertainment arts and media emphasis in general studies and a minor in informational sciences. And I joined this call because I'm interested in media. Um, right now, I'm on my fifth internship working for Fox Corporation, doing partnerships for their streaming platforms. And I'm just like more interested in like seeing like how the like the start of like getting a job after college and like negotiating your salary and that kind of thing. My name is Lisa Hines. I graduated 2007 actually with an arts degree as well. <laughs> and I currently work in Eller, the business college um, in alumni relations. So I work with Lacey actually often. <laughs> And I jumped on today to watch my husband call her <laughs> and, and see what kind of stuff uh, everyone's talking about, so. Great. Well, thanks, Lisa. And thanks everyone for joining us today. So it sounds like we need to do some, just some understanding of your career and career journey. So why don't we start there? Um, and maybe we could even touch on, you know, how did your career aspirations change from when you were in college to where they are now and um, what that journey was like starting here on campus as a Wildcat. Uh, so Matt, do you wanna start first? Sure, yeah, I definitely can. And um, kind of touched on a little bit with my intro, just like, you know, when, when, I, when I was growing up and, you know, when I went to school, I, I really wanted to have a career in sports and I didn't really know what that meant, right? I, you know, when you think about sports, you think about live TV production or maybe a sports show that you may host or be involved with. Um, and so part of um, what shaped how, where I ended up here was just exposure to different components that are, that are there. And so I think that's one of the biggest things that um, if I can impart on, on, you, on you guys while, while you're still in your college careers is to, to be thinking about the industry or the things that you're interested in um, and think about how wide that net could actually um, be cast. Um, if I would have known, you know, back then that, you know, sports would have entered into this digital space and this could have been part of the component, I would maybe shaped my, my studies or shaped what I was um, being, ex being exposed to early on in my career a little differently. But, um, but so doing that, doing that uh, research or just thinking about things a little bit differently or being involved with your career is, um, is great. Um, I think, Brandy, you said you're on your fifth internship. Internships are what helped shape where I ended up as well. Um, you know, getting that exposure, getting um, getting to meet people, getting to know what you like to do, what you don't like to do, 
um, in, in that real world setting really helped shape where I, where I ended up today as well. Um, so to, to go back to the original question, um, I, I thought I was going to grow up in sports, or sorry, I thought it, when I was growing up, I wanted to do something in sports. I ended up with this career in children's media. If you would have told me that that's what I was going to be doing, no way, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have believed it. But I saw how um, this this job that that was the, that I could have gone after at PBS Kids could slightly shape and, and morph into something and give me the foundation, give me the skills that that could turn into something I wanted to do long term. Um, I took the chance and, and I went in there and, and took it. Um, the and that's ultimately how I spun forward and, and got to where I am today. And so, you know, looking at how things can be related and looking at how you can get that great experience early on, and it may just be in something slightly different than what you're anticipating, but then being able to go in and show up in the interview and be like, boom, here, I can do X, Y, and Z. And my passion is really this, like, come give me a shot. And so that's, that's how I ended up where I'm today. Yeah. Perfect. And I think, you know, attending events like this where you're exposed to different careers and different ideas, um, it is a great way to start laying that foundation and exposure, like you said. Yeah, so we're just kind of thinking about career, you know, career goals and, you know, thinking back to when you were in college and what your goals were and then how they evolved to where you are now. And were there any changes and what were those changes and how did you manage that? For me, just because I, well, I graduated like two years ago, so my goals haven't really changed so much. They've uh if anything, I've just kind of, they've gone a little bit more stronger in a sense, just with kind of the environment that I'm in. Um, with theater, I, so I, I've done, been doing theater my entire life, basically for like 14 years. Um, when I, it wasn't until my junior year of high school, I had a teacher who actually was a professor at the U of A, Monty Ralstein, and he was my uh, voice teacher at the time. And he asked me, he was like, do you, why are we here? Where do you see yourself going with this? And I was like, I would love to do theater, but like, I don't know if this is really a profession that I can like make a living off of or like be successful in. And um, he was like, I, I believe you can do it if you want to do it. So I was kind of like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do it then. So I was, I auditioned for a bunch of colleges and I heard back from a few, but I heard back from the U of A and I been born and raised in Tucson. My dad works for the U of A. So I knew a lot about the U of A and I liked the campus and the program a lot. So I chose the U of A because of that. Um, and I, over my four years and then coming on to now being in Chicago, I just, I've always wanted to be a theater actor um, or just be acting some in some way. I don't know if I can do that my entire life. I can probably like later on in my like forties and fifties, I might change into something else or just kind of go where the wind takes me. But um, I just been trying to audition and do productions when I can. Um, I, when the whole pandemic and everything happened, I very much had to take a step back from theater just cause there wasn't any theater going on. Um, and I focused on just kind of providing for myself and for my uh, boyfriend who I live with here um, and just was working two restaurant jobs and kind of uh, gaining a resume in the restaurant world to then be able to, once I went on and could actually do theater again, could actually be able to have the side job of doing uh, working a restaurant and then um, have my main job or my passion of being in theater. So um, it just, with me, I think over the past two years, I've learned that you just kind of have to do what makes you happy. Um, I remember in college, we read this book, which it's called A Broken Beautiful Life, which that sums up theater. It's, you don't really go into it for the money, you go into it for the love and the passion of it. So um, it's, it's, a, it's hard. I'm not going to say that it's easy or not, but you just kind of have to focus on what makes you happy and go towards the goals that make you happy. I think my big message is that like, expose yourself to as many things as possible and put yourself out there. Cause I know that I, you know, from what I knew in college was like essentially nothing about what I'm doing today. And I just didn't know about all these things. And I think that's what college is for. And now I review interns uh, resumes who are already in college who were doing all this stuff in high school. So the more things you can get yourself um, out there and experience, I think the better. And sometimes it's as much about finding out what you don't want to do as what you do want to do. Like if there's something, oh, I thought I wanted to do this and I did an internship here. And I know that's absolutely not the life for me. And 
my personal experience was in college, uh, I liked sports. I just wanted to be around sports in some way. I thought you had to be an athlete, a journalist, or an agent. So I started as um, a journalism major, and then I switched to pre-law because I was like, oh, maybe I'll get on the representation side. And then I switched to art history because <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm going to go to grad school. I'm just going to do an undergraduate program that I enjoy. So I graduated with an art history major, and that took me to studying abroad in Italy, which is actually where I met Lisa. And I thought, you know, hey, maybe I'll do art history as a career. Um, but when I came back from Italy, I got an internship with Arizona Athletics. And through that, that kind of exposed me. Oh, wow, there's marketing, there's PR, there's branding. There's a ton of different um, avenues in the sports industry that I didn't know about. And after that, you know, of course, I wanted to jump into a full-time job from undergrad. But I just felt like, hey, why would the Phoenix Suns or whoever hire somebody like me? I didn't really feel like I had a lot of experience. So that's why I went to grad school and through that program, tying back to exposing yourself to stuff, you know, through the teachers we had, the professors, the guest speakers, just the opportunities. Um, I went to a school, St. Thomas in Miami that they exposed us to. I did so many volunteer, you know, like uh, special event things, special weekend things, um, you know, different internships. Uh, and then after school too, it took a full-time internship with the Dolphins and then another full-time internship with the New Orleans Hornets. We're now the Pelicans organization to kind of get me on the right path. But, you know, through uh, all my volunteer experiences, I saw, wow, I think PR communications, you know, written communications, interfacing with media is kind of the slot for me. And then from there, I was able to kind of focus in and pursue uh, that track in professional sports. Um, I was just going to say, I 100% agree with Calder and that you sometimes figure out what you want to do by doing something you don't want to do. Um, and I always tell, um, students that, you know, I had a lot of different twists and turns to get where I was. And when I was at the U of A, my favorite classes were in advertising. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to be in advertising. So when I got an advertising job, I thought, oh, I don't know about this. This is probably too corporate for me. I like the creative people, but these ad sales people, ugh, boring. So, you know, I left, um, you're laughing, but it's true. And I realized in that job that I was more creative than I was managerial, but I also um, have managerial skills, but I wanted to do creative and I didn't really know how to get a job in production. I was from Arizona and it was in Los Angeles or New York. And so when I moved out to LA, I did um, a lot of media sales jobs just to get to know people. Um, I also um, worked at a restaurant, um, met people there, ironically, you know, I would leave my day job and I would go hostess or wait tables at the, my night job. And I thought, oh, this is terrible. But I met people there and th they knew other production assistants and coordinators and people in production. And so it was kind of the jobs that I either were forced to take or didn't want to take before I started realizing, oh, these are good connections for me. Um, I also was an intern at a radio station in college. I thought, oh, I wanna be a traffic girl. And when they gave me the traffic girl job, I was like, oh, this is terrible. You know, So there was all these things that, um, that kind of come your way that I think too, there's a lot of pressure on students because you're in school four or five, six, however many years, and you get this degree and then you think, OK, well, this is my degree. I have to go use it. And the first job I get has to be my dream job. And I have to have the right salary and the right position. And I think what I've learned is the most successful people never were in their right position, never were making the salary they wanted to make. Sometimes weren't even in the field close to where they wanted to be. But if you're persistent and you learn from every job, you do land where you should. You know, I think there's, you know, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, like that that's across the board of just being open and understanding it's all a journey, right? You, you grow your career um, step by step. And you step. take away valuable lessons from every job. It doesn't really matter if it's, you know, whether it's managerial or finance or creative, you know, there's always something you can take to the next job that will help you. Yep. Perfect. Um, 
Well, for the next question here, I'm kind of looking at the chat and um, Andrew, you had a great question about, you know, just kind of navigating graduation and, you know, Calder and Matt, you graduated in the 08, 09, you know, great recession time, but, you know, Quinn and Suzanne, you know, your industries were impacted with the recent pandemic too. So maybe we could just touch on that. You know, Matt, I know you've responded in the in the chat there, did you want to maybe start and, and maybe discuss that and then we can kind of kick it to everybody else? Yeah, sure. Um, what I mentioned in the chat is just, yeah, it was it was an interesting time. I um, mean, I felt lucky to, you know, get the opportunity that I did, you know, even though uh, to Su Suzanne's point, it wasn't my dream job, right? It was it was something that worked. It's something that I saw um, that I could I could get a lot out of. And for me, it was it was realizing that this world is, is very different right now and, and I just need to focus and hunker down in, in this position and, and get the most out of what I can right now. Um, and so it was a divine focus around that. And, and what I mentioned is like, this is a good advice for, you know, these times, but also anytime, you know, every opportunity, every position you have, no matter how long you're there, you're surrounded by great people um, who are gonna have a lot to offer you. You're gonna be able to have, take advantage of really great opportunities and learn a ton. And it's all, it's a, the collection of all those different components that turn you into who you are and the professional that you are and, and help you shape what your expertise and what your experience is and what you're interested in personally. And, and all those, those um, components along the way really help um, define, define who you are and ultimately what your success is going to be. And so um, for, for me, it, it was that it was, you know, realizing I just need to put the blinders on and focus on what I have right now and, and be lucky for this opportunity. Um, and that's ultimately what, you know, springboarded me into to where I am now. And I, I think that's good advice no matter what time you're you're getting into your career at. For me, like I was aware of the Great Recession stuff and Andy, I actually went to college with Andy too. So I know that you fall into that category as well when we were getting out of uh, undergrad. So I was aware of it. And I guess to me, it did factor a little bit into my decision to go to grad school. I was almost delaying when I actually needed to find a real job for 12 or 18 months. It was like a three semester program. And then for me too, it may have adversely affected me, but I'm not sure just because like I said, after grad school, I did take two full-time internships. So I think maybe um, that did play into it, but I, always, I was kind of, I'm not trying to give myself too much credit because it, you know, you, I didn't understand what the great recession was or we probably all didn't at the time, what it was, what it was gonna be then. Um, so for me, really the thing that, uh, if you're talking about pivots and made me think the most was I was working for the NBA and the league had a lockout. They were maybe going to use it, lose a full season. I was still an intern. I was in this like nether world. Do I try to stick this out? Can I make it by on this small intern salary? Um, so for me, it's always key. You got to keep yourself at the forefront. You know, if there's a business or the place you're at, isn't doing, you know, what you need in your life at that point, you can always go somewhere else. You're not beholden to your first job or your, you know, next job or whatever it is. And then also I was always trying to, I guess, be positive towards myself. I was like, even in the worst times, people are still hiring. Like even now people will still be hiring. So you just got to think, um, what can I do to differentiate myself a little bit more than the next person? Is it doing an you know, extracurricular activity? Is it volunteering? Is it doing more in my current role? Uh, whatever it is. So that's kind of how I, I thought about things and how I kind of uh, continue to think about things throughout my career. You know, you're always constantly assessing those things. Well, I was going to say my uh, business is very different that when there is, um, you know, a recession, a crash, uh, I remember 9-11, uh, when the chips are down. People want content. They want um, to watch TV. They want to binge anything that they can, right? Because um, te television is cheaper than a lot of things. So I've been very lucky. And looking back, I would not have ever known or chosen this career based on that fact. But production, especially unscripted, is one of the most stable uh, careers in a bad time. So when 9-11 hit, I was supposed to do a show that um, was going to be shot in the United States. Well, uh, it was for a, a channel called UPN. It's no longer around, but they are like, let's pivot how we want this show. So let's, where's the safest place in the world? Okay, we're sending you guys to Fiji. Okay, hmm, that's tough. I'll go to Fiji and produce my show. So we did that. And when the recession hit, same thing. I mean, people, I was one of them. You lose houses and money and all this stuff. Well, 
after a few months, business started booming because network said we need content. Everybody's home on their couches and they need free entertainment and, and unscripted's cheap. And when the scripted people go down, everybody comes to us. So that's when my business boomed again. I had a show on the air for seven years. So I think um, I'm the exact opposite. It's, it's lucky and random, but um, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's a part of, of, of how it all works and, and it's great. Well, when we, when COVID hit, um, you know, everybody had a shutdown. We had to shut production down worldwide and all the networks came and they said, quick, figure out how to make television in COVID. Like, uh, so we stayed up day and night, you know, 13 hours a day on zoom, figuring out how to make it work. And within three months we had everybody back up and running and shooting shows and producing them different. And it's again, when people are home, they want to watch shows and, you know, now with streaming, um, and everybody who's, you know, in the content making world, they're just craving more and more and more content. So as content makers, I'm in a, I'm in a very lucky place. So for me, the pivot I had was I, um, so I like auditioned for a few things and they were like, oh, we're getting back. And then they were like, so we're going to postpone just because um, current stuff going on with COVID we will postpone it a month. And then it was postponed again, postponed again. And finally, I think it was in like, July of 2020, I kind of decided to take a step back from theater just because I was kind of tired of auditioning for stuff. And like, it's all, it's honestly easier to audition in person and like, just go into a room, sing the songs you have, or read the monologue that you have memorized or do a cold reading and leave versus like, setting everything up in your small little apartment, doing a dance call in your little studio with your bed and all this other stuff that you have to kind of move out of the way. So I kind of took, took a step back and was like, mm, we're going to wait until there's a glimmer of hope in sight. And we're just kind of, kind of focus on like staying afloat. So that's when I pivoted towards working um, the restaurant job that I had. And then I actually took on another restaurant job um, to get through the Chicago winter with everything. And then um, it wasn't until um, this past summer when things start opening back up again, there was more vaccines and stuff like that. And that uh, Broadway in New York opened up that a bunch of other theaters started to open up here. And then I was able to kind of pivot back and put my focus more towards um, theater and less towards the restaurant job. I, I went through some... I there was times when I was kind of sad that I wasn't doing what I thought I would be doing at this point. Um, I had some friends who were um, in Arizona or they were in other places that weren't as, because Chicago really cracked down on um, letting theaters open and just kind of like mandates and stuff like that, which is great. But other places that I knew friends were doing theaters already in Arizona, like a year ago and all this other stuff. And I was like, maybe I should go back. Maybe I should like, what should I do so I can do theater? And I kind of had to, my boyfriend had to keep reminding me that like everyone's journey is different. You have to focus on your journey, not other people's. And that if you have the drive for it and the passion towards it, it'll work its, it'll work its way out. So Brandon had a question and it's addressed to Matt and Suzanne and talking about your degrees, which, you know, I think maybe we could even open it up to just broader skill sets too. Right. So, uh, she says that, you know, we don't have the media arts uh, major anymore. So what specific classes did you take that, you know, helped you in the roles that you're in? Um, but maybe we could even broad that up and, you know, Calder and Quinn, you know, what are the skill sets that are needed for your areas? And, you know, what can these students be doing now to help develop some of these skill sets for their later careers as well? I have a question about that only because, you um... Uh, my understanding is that the media arts just has more specific um, majors, right? Because media arts, when I went there, was very, very broad. It was like you could do everything from advertising to a production editing class. But now, is it um, uh, more specific, or what are how did how I? Do I have like the closest thing to media arts. It's general studies, arts, media, and entertainment. And yeah. I, I like saw the media arts degree and it was like, doesn't have it anymore. So 
it's mostly like broad you could take courses in different colleges like I took courses in like film and arts and like art history and communications and e-society but like there's a lot of courses like advertising if it's through Eller you can't really do any of those classes through Eller I feel like now, and yes, mine was very broad, um, but a lot of it, to be honest, and this was a while ago, but a lot of it was watching movies and analyzing them and then going to groups and talking about, um, you know, we did uh, John Wayne movies or, you know, Hitchcock movies and all this. And while that was interesting, I wasn't learning practical, hands-on career stuff I was watching cool movies and talking about them I think nowadays you guys have a little bit more hands-on which is helpful when I graduated if you would have asked me if I had any skill whatsoever in an actual career I'd probably would have told you no but if you asked me if I watched a lot of really great movies I would say yes (laughs) so I think it's actually a huge improvement through the years that now there's a lot more hands-on um But it did, you know, I I see your point, uh, Branda, about having, I did have some advertising. We were able to take, um, you guys were talking about some art history. I took Italian archaeology. It was, um, you know, things like that. But um, I don't know. I think I, I got out. There was a question, too, just to put it all together about, like, support and stuff. And I would say that getting out was scary. And, you know, I had a degree, but I didn't have practical knowledge. And I just sort of had to figure it out on my own and start taking jobs and learning. And I I always used to interview people, my um, employers, other employees, and ask them, how'd you get here? What do you want to do? Where can I go from here? And my coworkers would laugh at me. They're like, you're always making appointments with all the bosses and trying to figure out, you know, and I said, well, I just, I'm so clueless and I'm so curious. So I feel like those people appreciated that I asked questions and wanted to figure out where they were going. But, um, you know, I would say from, from a, from a class perspective, even though what I had was broad, I mean, I had to take accounting, you know, stuff like that. There was all kinds of stuff but um nowadays you know I feel like you guys have a little bit more practical knowledge which which is probably helpful Matt you might have a different opinion of media arts than I do yeah when, when I went through the program and graduated in 2008 they started, started to shape it to get a little bit more specific and you could take these different tracks and so I went down the producer track um and so it was a lot of what you're saying Suzanne like you know there was the theory behind things where we were watching films and and breaking them down and Mm -hmm. and what that helped open my eyes to were like okay there's actually people out there who are like deciding you know what shot we're gonna is gonna be here what (laughs) is gonna be in this component and all this stuff that I took for granted just like growing up and watching a movie or watching tv or you know living life like you know, there's people behind all these decisions. And, and that started to get me thinking like, okay, there's all these different jobs and different components that break, that, that make up this industry we're in. Um, so there's a lot of the theory stuff, but um, the stuff that really impacted me were, yeah, we started to get a little bit more practical. We created films in, in our classes and, and, and had to put all those different um, areas to, to practice. Like we had to make those decisions, make, write the script or set up the scene or, and all those different components. And so that was awesome. But the thing that really stuck with me and what shaped me to who I am today was a lot of the external stuff that you have access to when you're on campus too. And this this stuff is invaluable. When I was there, I'm not sure if it's still around, but there was a student run TV station called UATV3. And some friends and I put together a sports show that we got together and filmed every Tuesday night and called it the dorm room sports chat. And I bet you there was like six kids who watched it every week, but um, it didn't matter because it was all about just going through and going through the motions and and coming up with um, what you wanted to do and what you wanted to create and get that exposure. And, and these were the things that I ended up talking about during my interviews um, was, was all, all this experience, all these cool programs and projects and stuff that, that I had access to when I was on campus. And, and there's no other world like that than when you're on campus or in the university that you can just wake up and decide one day, okay, I'm gonna go make a, a TV station or sorry, a TV show for, my colleagues and, and go and do that and go put it into practice. And so it, it, taking advantage of that stuff while you're on campus is, is super valuable. Caller Quinn, do you kind of have any classes that stood out to you or skill sets that you developed that are really helpful in your roles today? Sure. I think this is a very basic thing. And coming from a communications person, maybe it's a, of course, or you'll roll your eyes, but like, I think 
being a good writer is just so essential. And like, I don't even think you need to be able to write, you know, a thesis or, you know, these in-depth things. But if I look at a resume and there's errors on it, or if someone's corresponding with me trying to set up an interview and, you know, their uh, emails don't make sense or there's misspellings or they misspell my name or they, I ask two questions, but they only respond to one of them. Like, these very basic things that I think people can do that might be getting lost since we're all on our phones sending, you know, three image, you know, emoji responses nowadays. I think that is just so essential. Just if you can be a good writer, that is going to get you a long way. And really the bigger idea there is just be an effective communicator. You know, however you're dealing with someone, if you're trying to get a job, if you're trying to, you know, do whatever, it's just, that's really essential. And again, I think it was mentioned, and I think it's a good point, just expose yourself and get involved in other things. Like I said, you know, I uh, interned for Arizona athletics, but at the time I was an art history major. So even if it's just something you're interested in or curious about, try it out. And for me, as someone reviewing resumes of uh, like hiring people, hiring interns, entry-level folks or whatnot, you know, I don't, I'm not necessarily looking for a scale of work. You don't have to work at the biggest, best place right off the bat. But if I see someone that has made an effort to do different volunteer um, items or has, you know, had a multitude of internships, like Matt mentioned, the UATV thing, it doesn't matter if one person or a million people are watching it, like to show that kind of gumption that, hey, I was willing to do this and this is why I did it to build a skill set. And that's why I'm interested in this X, Y, Z. For me, as someone who's, you know, looking at folks, uh, you know, to potentially hire, that's what can stick out and make you stand out. Well, for me, the most beneficial class I had was my audition class that we had my senior year. Um, Because from an acting standpoint, it well, the big thing we worked on was like what you do when you go into an audition, like how do you dress? How do you, the biggest thing was uh, it's called your uh, Bible, so to speak, um, which for me is, so it has all the cuts for songs. And then it's um, so like for people who don't know. So like when you go into an audition, usually they're like, Oh, can you do a 32 bar song from a uh, contemporary musical or from a golden age musical? And I'll like, have the music so I can give it to the pianist and be able to perform. But um, we would do, I remember there was days where he'd be like, okay, today's going to be an audition day. Just be prepared for anything. So you'd like walk in he'd be, and he would say like, okay, we're going to be doing golden age. And you would walk in there like, okay, here's my golden age song. And they're like, okay. Um, so instead of 32 bars, you're singing four bars and you're actually going to do a, um, instead of doing contemporary song, I want a song from a hundred years before someone obscure go. And just like stuff where like, honestly has helped me in auditions. I've, I've had like, I went to one audition where in the middle of it, they're like, okay, can you do your song with a Southern dialect? And I was like, I have a Southern song I can sing for you. And they're like, no, I want you to sing the song you have and sing in a Southern dialect on the spot. And was like, okay, which, I'd done that once before in class, so that helped me out. But then applying it to not theater related, like when I did my interview for um, a job that I was at, they like, um, the tactic that the um, manager likes to use that I know he uses now is he really tries to intimidate you when he's um, interviewing you for a serving position. And um, he like was asking me these questions like rapid fire and because I had in auditions had to deal with situations where it was like so quick turnover, I was able to kind of roll with the punches and take things on and like keep the conversation flowing without kind of freaking out, which is just helpful in any situation you're in. Even like I'll have, I'll be serving some days and I'll have, I'll tell someone about this pizza that I'm selling them. And they're like, I, um, last time I was here, I had the worst pizza I ever had. I have to be like, oh, well, I don't know who that was, but you're in my control now and I'll, and I'll show you what good pizza is and kind of try to like spin it around, which others I know would be like, and then run away. I see the theme of having hands-on experience and being able to interact with other people um, is important. So thank you for sharing. Uh, there, I think we have time for one more question. And uh, Maggie, you had a great question here. So I'm just gonna you know, share this. And you know, she talks about the type of support and not just the internal support of probably your closest friends, but also external, 
right? And, and how do you find those people that can be in your corner and support you along your career journey? So, um, Suzanne, I know you're a mentor in our Wildcat Mentor Society, so I'm going to kick it to you first. Um, well, we um, we talk a lot in the mentor program uh, as mentors why we joined, um, and it was because we didn't have any. <laughs> we didn't have anyone telling us anything, um, and a lot of us, you know, made our way through. And so the mentor program for us is super exciting because we get to mentor people. Um, you know, students who graduate and um, go on to jobs and we still keep in touch with them and help them get work and have them um, like a lot of people, even outside of the program, we um, help network because there's kind of someone for everyone in this group. Um, but I will say, you know, keeping, uh, you talk about internal passion and I think that that is super important because, and I'll tell you a little story, make it fast. When I got my production assistant job, I had had another job. It was, it was below me with a pay cut. And I called my mother and I was like, I'm going to be a production assistant. And she said, what's that? And I said, well, I have to go to this, the store for the celebrities and then and all this and make copies. She said, that's below you. You can't do that job. That's ridiculous. You, you're just, you're going to ruin your whole career. And she didn't understand. And it's not her fault. Um, but at the same time, I thought, oh, well, I don't have the support of my family and my friends don't understand because they're not here. So I have to find like-minded people who understand what I'm going through and that their production assistants as well, making five cents. And, you know, we're all going to live in an apartment together and, and you have to find people who are like you and, and help you kind of get through it. And we all helped each other. Um, and that was really important. And then, you know, then of course, years later, my family's like, woo, go Suzanne, you know, and you have a little bit of success and they all jump on board, um, which I'm glad they did. But I really do think internally, I believed in myself. I knew I could do it. I knew if I asked the right questions to the right people and I, and I was persistent in my learning and surrounded myself with people who are helpful um, and threw out the doubters that I could do it, but it really does have to come from you and believing in yourself. Um, and that, and that's huge. That's important. And I think that, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity right now in the world. There's a lot going on, not just in our business, but in lots of businesses. So, um, it's a, it's a really good time for you guys. And I hope you take full advantage of, of everything around you, because if you believe in yourself, you will do it. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's, of course, the hope that you have someone in an organization that can help you get a job, and that stuff's hard, and, and come in things have been made easier with the world we're living now with stuff like LinkedIn, where you can easily connect with people, and that, and that helps, but for me, my, the, when I was thinking about this question, um, at every stop along the way, and every position I've had, I've always had those one or two people who I was able to like kind of let my guard down with and, and be honest with and have these open conversations about where I want to go or what I'm feeling or what I'm struggling with or what I'm excited about. And, and being, um, you know, not afraid to get into that space when you're in a professional setting and, and find these people who are friends and allies and, and helpful. And, um, and, and they may not be the ones that are going to give you that promotion or give you the next job, but they're, but just having those conversations and, and um, being able to sort out in your own mind where you want to go and, and being in charge and being in control of yourself is, is what you ultimately should rely on and taking those shots. And to Suzanne's point, like believing in yourself and, and getting yourself there is, is what's, what's, the, what's ultimately going to define success for you. Um, but, you know, having those allies and having those people that, that you're not afraid to get vulnerable with or be honest with, um, those, are the one, those are the conversations I still remember today and, and, you know, give me chills when I think back about, you know, how young I was for coming out of college and having those discussions to, to where I am today. Like, those are the ones, those are the ones that helped me out. Um, and so, you know, what I found, like I mentioned, is it's not so much having these connections to, to get you that next job, but just being the being there and, and being open to, to the people who are around you is, is really important when at every stop you are around, along the way. Matt's answer was awesome. That was a really good answer. And I'd say much of the same. And it doesn't always have to be established people or people in the positions you want to get to. At the college level, it's very much about your contemporaries and your classmates and the people around you. And, you know, I had someone who was a year ahead of me who explored the uh, sport management grad school path before me and that 
help kind of steer my direction. Um, and he was very helpful. So yeah, it's, it's the people around you. It's the people on this call. Uh, it's anybody just make sure you build that network, build genuine relationships, not for the sake of trying to get that next job, but just, you know, relationships for relationships sake, you guys are going to be each other's uh, best resource at different parts of, of your career. Um, I agree with what everyone else has said, but, uh, especially with what Suzanne said, you kind of have, you have to believe in yourself, especially in the arts. It, what the things that make you different are what make you stand out. Um, I kind of, it's interesting because so with theater and I know I talking to a lot of other actors and stuff like that, the philosophy that they do in colleges, they kind of, they take you, you come to college and you're like a vase, so to speak. And then they basically shatter the vase and then with the knowledge from school piece you together into this new, hopefully better vase to push you out in the real world. But you kind of have to, when you're out in the real world, you need to focus in on the things that make you special. And you have to kind of, you have to remember that and that'll be your strength, kind of your superpower in a way, so to speak. And that'll help you in like situations and like meeting people and like, um, I'm, you can't see it on this call, but I'm a very tall person. I'm six, six. And I, for the longest time was always like, oh gosh, I'm a giant. When I would walk into a room, I'm like, oh God, like for certain roles and stuff like that, I wouldn't consider myself for it. And it wasn't until I actually was, um, took that away and just kind of aud started auditioning for stuff that I knew I wasn't maybe meant for. And just so they could see me that I started getting calls back from people who were would say, yeah, I didn't think of you for this show, but maybe for this other one that I'm doing. So it's kind of about having the belief in yourself and that'll help you moving forward. This has been fantastic. And we are coming up right on the hour here. So we're going to close it out. And um, thank you so much to all of our panelists and our um, participants today. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. I think there's been a lot of really important nuggets to be pulled from these conversations and hopefully you can apply them, even though your career tracks are all very different. Um, there were some common themes of, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, putting your hands onto a project and trying it, even though you might not be successful and, and, and making those connections around you, but also believing in yourself and, uh, and what your capacity is. So thank you everyone for coming today.